Hello and welcome back to the series on machine learning and neural networks for DH. In this video, we're going to start with our binary text classification problems. In this video, I'm going to pose the problem and talk about the ways in which we'll solve it. And we'll learn a few basic concepts for the resolution of this problem, such as what is binary text classification. And I'm going to talk generally about how we're going to solve the problem by acquiring what specific data. So let's lay out the problem very clearly. It's a goofy one, but one that I think has a wide range of applications to other DH specific problems. So the year is 2109. Historians have recently found portions of a manuscript from an anonymous author. They want to know which author may have written it. They have narrowed it down to two potential authors, Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde. They now want you to solve this problem using neural networks. Now, this is a goofy example because it's the year 2109 and we're using a 2020 uh, method for solving this problem. By then, I'm sure they'll have a much more sophisticated way to resolve this issue. But it's a fun way to lay out, lay out a very basic problem that's going to show you a very easy way to solve it using neural networks. And the reason why this is a good case study is because it allows for you to have an easy problem to solve while learning the basics of neural networks in a real world example. And I've chosen this one because as we're going to see in later videos when we address other binary text classification problems, uh, the lessons and the mechanics that you learn from this video will transfer to solve more sophisticated issues that you are likely to encounter and why neural networks might be the solution to your particular digital humanities problem. So let's break down this problem. It is a binary text classification problem. What does that mean? Well, it's binary because in this problem, we only have two potential answers, Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde. Now, both of these are authors. Dan Brown is, I believe, an American author who is still alive today. Oscar Wilde was a British author who has or sorry, an Irish author who has since passed away and popular in the 1800s for writing books like Dorian Gray. Now, it is a binary problem because we only have two potential authors or classes to actually uh, answer the problem. So binary being two, Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde, zero or one. And as we're going to see, that's a relatively easy problem to solve. And the reason why I've structured the problem with these two authors is because their methods of writing, their styles of English, their word usages, and everything is wildly different, no pun intended. And that means that it is going to be very easy to train a neural network to recognize the difference between Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde. But the because this is an easy problem to solve, it is a good case study because we're going to learn about word embeddings and how word embeddings work fundamentally in a neural network. And because Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde are going to be using radically different terminology, different sets of characters, different names, etc., we're going to be able to see and map out visually how this process works and why the neural network is going to have a relatively easy time solving this problem. Now, let's tackle the next bit here, binary text. So this is how we lay out different kinds of problems. You might have a text-based problem. You might have an image-based problem. This is a text classification problem because we are dealing with textual data. So strings, essentially. The way in which a neural network processes strings and text is essentially the same. It processes a series of numbers in an array. The difference is what those arrays look like. While a image array might have uh, be a three by three matrix, a textual array is typically going to be a sentence or a block of text with some padding. So zeros that we add into it so that we have all consistently sized data. So that's why we say binary text and classification is a type of problem in which you are trying to classify some kind of data. And that's why we call this a binary text classification problem. And the type of learning that we're going to be doing here is supervised learning. 
Now, there are a few different ways in which you can train neural networks or train machine, uh, do machine learning. Uh, there's supervised learning, uh, there's unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, etc. We are doing supervised learning. Why are we doing supervised learning? Because we can solve this problem by going out and gathering a large quantity of data from Oscar Wilde and from Dan Brown. And we can label that data very easily and train a neural network by passing in each sentence of an author and then passing in a corresponding label. So let's just say zero for Oscar Wilde and one for Dan Brown. And we can do this with, I think we're going to use a sample size of around uh, 450,000 characters. I think that comes down to 70,000 words or so. Essentially, what we are going to do is train a neural network on a limited amount of known data. So this is why it's supervised learning, because we are allowing the neural network to learn what Oscar Wilde looks like and what Dan Brown looks like. And in the case of this video, we're going to use data gathered from just two sources. Oscar Wilde, we're, for Oscar Wilde, we're going to use his work, Dorian Gray. And so we're going to just give the neural network essentially all of Dorian Gray. And then what we're going to do is give the neural network parts of uh, Dan Brown's book, Origin. And I say parts because we are going to reduce the quantity of data in Dan Brown because it's a much larger book than Dorian Gray down to the same size of the data that we have from Oscar Wilde. So it's only going to be the first 70,000 words from the book Origin by Dan Brown. But that's going to be enough, as we will see, for the neural network to be able to securely identify if these sentences from this unknown work are Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde. So we're going to train the neural network on a whole bunch of data from Dan Brown and Oscar Wilde, and we're going to separate that training data, as we're going to see in later videos, into two categories, training data and validation data. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a test, a controlled test, on data whose label we know. And the neural network will not get a label for this data. And for this, we're going to choose the later parts of origin that the neural network has not seen. Now, this is a fairly easy test to run because First of all, the word usage and the characters in origin are going to be very, very specific to the training data. So this is not a great test, but it's a good one to start with, to test our neural network's ability. And what we're going to find is the neural network will have very limited uh, trouble identifying if that text is Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde. And in this testing case, all of the sentences will be Dan Brown. Once we have that done, then we're going to let it run on the anonymous text that it has not seen from a book it's not seen, and see if it can figure out which author it is, Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde. And I think what we're going to do after that is then give it a completely different author. So you can see how a neural network works with data that we know is not going to be either Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde. And you're going to see it struggle. You're going to see it be very confident in certain cases for one or the other, and other times not really know what to do with it. Now let's talk about why all this will be happening. So imagine that you have learned and read as much as you could in the world. The problem is your entire world, the entire world in which you exist, only exists in really kind of two, uh, two authors. There's only works by Dan Brown and there's only works by Oscar Wilde. Now imagine you're given a book by uh, Melville, Herman Melville, the guy who wrote Moby Dick. And somebody told you, is this Dan Brown or Oscar Wilde? How would you answer that question? If your entire world was just framed around two possibilities, you would be forced to frame that new work that you've discovered in binary terms. Well, this feels a lot like Oscar Wilde because the English is much more antiquated. Uh, but it also doesn't really look like Oscar Wilde because... He's a bad author. I'm sorry, I don't like Melville. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but you can see what I'm saying here. If your entire world is framed in this binary sense, then you are forced to actually make a determination with only those two potential outputs. This is much like what's happening to our neural network. It's only being trained on two possibilities. So when it encounters something that doesn't fit either one of those two possibilities, it's being forced to understand and process that information 
through these binary terms. And you're going to see that it struggles. This is not the way data works in the real world. In the real world, we oftentimes have oftentimes have multiple classes. And as we're going to see in later videos, this is known as multi-class text classification problems. That's gonna be it for this video though. Hopefully you have a good sense of the problem that we're facing and the general way in which we're going to solve it. In the next video, we're going to start looking at this problem in a lot more closer detail and start actually trying to solve it. And the way we're gonna solve it is we're going to gather the data, clean the data, and start processing that data through our neural network. And here's a general outline of what we're going to be doing over the next four videos. And as I said, I am probably going to be adding a few other binary text classification problems before we get to multi-class text classification. That's gonna be it for now though. Thank you for listening. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below.